welcome to the Stanley Street Social Podcast presented by Matt. My name is Campbell Flakemore. It's the Giro d'Italia 2020 rest day one, and I'm here with Miles Scotson. Welcome, Miles. Campbell, how are you going? Good, mate. How are you? Good, good. Not too tired yet, but yeah. Made plenty, plenty to come, mate. Yeah. Um, before we get on to the Giro, let's um, talk a little bit about your year. How's your year been? Because it's been a pretty wild year for everyone. Yeah, I mean, definitely not how you expect 2020, 2020 to go. I mean, it's been a pretty good year racing-wise, but a bit interrupted. Like I started, started the season pretty late with the training. I had a knee reconstruction last year in beginning of September. So that was like, yeah, three months out of proper training. Just uh, about six weeks of prep for two and under, but started pretty pretty well there um yeah it's and then we quickly found i think it was it was around uae to the next race up to the australia block where everything broke out and kind that's of where a few boys up. a few riders were going pause there hey at uae for corona yeah it was <laughs> gav Rhea, i think and the uae guys and i remember my teammates were stuck in i actually got out of there early because i fell sick after the first stage super sick like i've never been that sick in years my god and uh i couldn't even they couldn't even get me to the second hotel i just had to stay in the first one and they were trying to get me a flight home i missed two flights because i still wasn't well enough to fly and then um they got in that lockdown in the second hotel my teammates arno ramen uh kono and uh, they, they were stuck there for 10 days, I think. I think you might have done a podcast with Raman actually during that Yeah, period. Clem did, I think. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, got out of there. But that, that was when it all, all kind of broke out world, world, worldwide, but also for cycling as well. Yeah. How was the lockdown period for you? Where were you um, based? And like, were you able to train outside or were you like properly locked indoors? I mean, that when it actually, I was I was trying to come back from the sickness of UAE in Girona, and I remember doing this really hard five-hour training, and then pulling up my phone and seeing the next race has got cancelled. So I rode directly home, stopped training for a few days, <laughs> and then everyone can. But it, in Girona was was quite. I mean, that was the beginning. Everyone was panicking, and I remember being like walking in the town, going my god like streets were empty the lockdown started just police and i was like this is not good and i thought spain was so screwed that i I kind of packed my things and went to andorra of the place up there and just thought that spain was doomed but then quickly it was bad in andorra as well so then i was in lockdown up there but uh yeah, yeah just i mean nothing you could do a lot of, a lot of panic around cycling at that time but Depends how much you read into the media. Yeah. What was the talk in your team? Was there was everyone feeling pretty pretty comfortable about like the continuation of the team and all of all of this stuff? Um yeah, the team quickly like I think they got in contact with the sponsors and with Group Harmer, which is an insurance, FDJ, which is government lottery. There was not a big stress, so that was the first relief there was. And actually they Around the time of the COVID, they extended the sponsorship. So, yeah, that helped us. Be- look better than other teams. I was more, but still, if you're if you're right out of contract, it, it's still a worry if like you're thinking uh, six teams are going to fold because then you go, my contract's up this year. If yeah. multiple teams fold, you know, it doesn't matter if the team's going ahead. But so still stress for a lot of riders in the team. And I think in Group Palme, we only had six riders signed for the next season at that, at wow. that stage. Yeah, so yeah. everyone was off the contract. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Since um, since the lockdown finished and racing uh, has got back into it, you've been you've been pretty busy and you've been on on the same sort of schedule as Arnaud. And it seems like you guys got a really decent group going around him at the moment. What's What's been the story with you guys all linking up and getting a bit of a groove? Yeah, we we had a training camp 
in France and they we split it into three groups. You had the GC group and then we had the sprint sprint based group. And we were there already working on lead outs and we did uh this year the in UAE, as I said, I got sick there. We were there with, with the group really trying we changed the lead out a bit from last year. Try to go in with a bigger bigger train, I guess. I mean, last year I was more pulling, kind of doing like a second apprenticeship. Like I was doing that Neo Pro and BMC and then joined French team, just right in the front again. Try to change it and go more with a, like a real, like a real sprint train, kind of like HEC had, like Lotto had. So we really mm -hmm. tra trained for this specifically. We went to Burgos was the first race after that. And actually, we didn't win there, even though it was a smaller race. But we had two lead outs, super strong, in full control. Arno was second both times. But I think that gave him confidence. And we were all confident the win was going to come. And then the first big one was um, at Milan Turin. Um, about three, four days after Burgos, we finally nailed the lead out there. And Arno was super quick, uh, winning ahead of Caleb and Sagan there. So that that got the ball rolling, and then and then I know, just took off from there. He was winning with lead out or no lead out in the next races. Was he ever a chance to do the the Tour de France, or was it always about the Giro for him? Um, always about the Giro because in this team, they kind of make a plan and they don't change it too much, which I think is nice actually. And going off the season before. I think he had maybe three wins, one stage of Giro. It was a pretty quiet year last year mm -hmm. for him. So, and what Thibaut had done in the tour before he was out, he was clear. It was clear it was going to be all for Thibaut this year, the tour. And there was n no, there was never a plan for Arno de Vitor, even when he was flying and winning so much before. There was <laughs> yeah. a lot of people questioning, oh, should Arno be at the tour? But, you know, when they've already prepared, with Tibo and that group, and we've prepared for the Giro, I think it is best to not make those last-minute decisions. Okay, in the end, might have been better to say no, no to Vitor with what happened with uh, Tibo. It was very, very quiet for the team there. But, yeah, now now there's three stage wins at Giro, so. Yeah. Know. So, like, cycling is one of those things. It's not like you, you train with your teammates, like, every day. Like, how, how do you prep for like a like a big lead out train for a grand tour like we had that yeah i mean we had that training camp to get together a little bit but even in training it's never the same when it when there's not other teams there you know mm. um i mean i'm learning all the time but the, remember the two guys behind me usually is ramen who was lead out for degenkov at sunweb and then jacopo was last man for christoph when he was flying a petition. So these guys have got loads of experience. And for someone like me, yeah, I could do with a, a bit more. The, the training was, the training camp was good for me because I need, I need to keep getting that feel. But um, it was perfect doing some smaller races as well because it's easier to prepare a lead out in, say, Burgos or Petosha Runs or Luxembourg than, than the, the Giro. So they were, some of those races where we were win, winning there, there was like, it felt like rehearsal for this. Um, but yeah, we, we, we obviously are all training pretty similar. My training is pretty based around the lead out now, actually, uh, even before the Giro, normally maybe I'll be doing some time to training. I didn't really touch a TT bike in the last couple of weeks, just training 30 second sprint. The other guys the same. And then, um, yeah, so yeah, we're not together, but, uh, everyone's training similarly and then just trying to put it together in the race. Yeah. Are you enjoying the role like as a lead out man? Is it something that you you saw yourself like becoming? Because like the, the, the track think, background is, is pretty is pretty handy for this sort of role. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know when you when you're a rider like myself and you go to the world tour and you're not a climber, you're not a sprinter mm. and I couldn't win TTs. You kind of you, you you feel like you're strong enough to be there, but you're a bit lost with the real direction. It, I could try and become a real opportunist for breakaway or something, but it was like, where do I go? But actually, I think for me, the lead out was like, if I can mentally get this right, physically it's perfect. Making a short effort with a track background, bit of time all rounder, really. So, and I and I 
when it's going well and you're really in it and like now when we're, when we're winning it is super the adrenaline like i i think about it here there's no way I, do i really want to ride in a gc team pull, pulling on the front for 100k <laughs> for them to ride quick up and out and at the end what's the adrenaline with this you know mm-hmm. with the sprint days i love that adrenaline you know it's to you know it's never sure to get it correct and um uh, yeah to put it simply, I'm really enjoying it. So, yeah, even though you take a few risks as well, but that's that's cycling. Yeah, let's talk about the Giro. How how's it been? Because the start was down in Sicily. Started with a TT, and you had you had a pretty good ride. You said you hadn't been doing too much TT training, but a, a top ten on a super fast course. You must have been quietly happy with it. Yeah. Um... Didn't I mean I wanted to do a good ride in the TT? I was nervous to see where I was. I was nervous because this is this is a big goal for us. Giro, of course, we're nailing leadouts before before coming to the race. So it was a bit like, can I do it again? Can I do it again? So the TT mm-hmm. gave me that confidence. So I was really happy with that. Um, it was a good start, uh, that's for sure. Um, Super fast course. I think I hit 96k an hour on the descent, but I, I think some other guys in the TT hit even quicker. Mm-hmm. But um, actually, the team took about 10 minutes before to start, pulled my wheels out out the bike with the TT tires on, put the road tire wheels in, and let the pressure down because they were just too worried for me to drop it on the descent and be out for the lead outs because that's a priority here you know and, uh, and that's probably what you would have done you would have, you would have hit that downhill at 110k an hour risking it all yeah 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 exactly if you start i started pretty good with good legs and it's, if you start with bad legs you're not going to take risk but you know i got over the top and i was like okay you take this descent pretty quick but of course i didn't want to crash so yeah anyway it was a good start it was good for the confidence and yeah. Then the leadouts, like the first stage that Demar won, was that like left hander, like with a K to go, you dive bomb, not dive bomb, but you hit it pretty hard and got a got a little gap. When those things happen, does, yeah. it just, does it just play out like that, and you know your guy behind you just lets you go, or do you just press on? Do you wait? Like what's going through your mind in at this time? That was a complicated one for. The fact that all the, the lead-outs with you this year, nothing like that had occurred. But, I mean, normally you always have Raman behind, still two guys behind me, and I might start around 2K to go. But we had to change. When Bora pushed the pace on that mountain uh, mm. in mid-race, we, we lost Raman. The rest of us passed. The guys, the rest of the guys were just chopping off absolutely flat out to keep the other sprinters from getting back on. And then I had to take the place of Raman, leaving a bit, bit later so i kind of just surfed there and we were lucky to get to the front israel led out down the middle of the road something i'd never do you always pick one side and we just had the opening on the right there and i think when i passed it was like yes perfect we like crosswind coming on the last straight as well i was not thinking to just once you got that front position there's no need to take that corner so quick we could slow down there and um i just took the corner too quick and Jacopo was more thinking going into it okay slow here we got the front so we had two different mentalities going to that corner and by the time i looked back we basically accelerated not too quick looked back and saw the gap and i had, i just had half a second to think because it at that stage if i go back maybe we can get swamped from behind mm. So I thought, no, I had the gaps too big. I can't go back to Yakbo now. I just got to push on, and he'll make decision, the decision to let me go, which he did. And um, yeah, it forced it forced like um, Viviani kind of lost his lead out man there because he had to pull to bring me back. It worked out perfect, but you know, looking at it, it could it it could have screwed things up. Um, yeah, there was just half a second decision. And in the end, it was the right one. But, um, yeah, the mistake was coming into the corner a little bit too quick there. Um, just, just the, you know, that thing of Yakupo, I'm going to take it easy, more experience than me. And then <laughs> myself just, you know, going, you know, we're going to rip this last straight. It was kind of, that was in my mind, you know, so... 
there's a thing in these lead outs you've got to control the adrenaline a little bit. And there is a lot of thinking. You are always thinking what side of the road you're on, where's the wind coming from, and what ride is Arno getting? You know, you want to give him the smoothest ride to the line. Um, just doesn't always have to be from the front. But um, so that's always, yeah, in the heat of the moment to, to be able to just breathe a little bit and back it off. That's um, That's important. What's the idea of um, sticking to one side of the road? You say when Israel went through the middle, you said you wouldn't do that. What's what's the idea with the the left or the right? That's just that's to make it more simple on other teams passing. I mean, we 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 had our trainer video the last fifteen k of that race, and I just kept rewatching the video, rewatching the video that those roads coming in because it's so important and. We said we picked the spots where if we're behind, we need we need to move up here because there's only a few spots where you can actually move up. And then we, with the full train, we planned to take it from about 2K to go and you had those twisting bends. On the, I said after, after the final bend, I'll take the left. And if they try to pass, they'll be coming on the right. And then midway down that straight, we move to the right to block. So you always know where the teams are coming from. If you lead down the middle of the road, yeah, you've got left. If you want to pass on the left, you pass on the left. You want to pass on the right, you pass on the right. And you're looking both sides. It makes it more complicated. So, and, and it, of course, if there's a crosswind, you choose one side of the road. But regardless, we always choose one side. And I would have gone to left and then to the right to stop teams passing. But, you know, if Israel had done something like that, we may not have been able to pass. But um, they didn't. They <laughs> let out down the middle of the road. So we could take the front there. Do you get nervous in these in these lead outs? Like there's obviously a, a quite a big role for you to perform. It's not like you're just pulling on the front, bringing back the brake. Like you're quite important now for a for a big rider. Like do you, do you get nervy or is it just, just coming at you so quick that you've got no time to really get nervous? On the sprint, I mean, I start the, the mountain days in the Jira here, just like, it's a long day to get through. And the, the sprint days, it's all before to start the race, already some nerves to be absolutely focused. And yeah, of course, the, the last kilometers, I mean, sometimes if I'm the guy bringing us to the front, um, I know I have to be in position and one or two mistakes if we lose some wheels and behind and I'm a, I know in red hot form to win can be on me if we get it wrong. So that of course is pressure. Of course I'm a bit nervous, but well, in a in a good way. I mean I think I perform better when, when there's a bit of nerves, a bit of pressure. Um just try to yeah, but I'm I'm always thinking that, you know, with five K to go, one wrong move can can put your third thirty wheels back. But but we've been lucky so far. Yeah. What happened the other day, mate? I was at stage six or seven you just crashed at the front at the front of the bunch. Yeah, you got the thing on the elbow, just a stupid crash. And you know, I had as soon as I landed on the floor, I was like this. You know, in second wheel of peloton, touch a wheel, night was sorry. I had someone call. Yeah, when we that was a crosswind stage, super stressed, uh, focus, focus, and then we had a quiet moment going up the hill. The one time where you didn't need to be. And I just looked left because quick set were coming. And and I thought I was clear of my teammate's wheel. He was in front of me. And I, as I'm looking, I've gone to move across. And I, I thought I'd cleared his wheel, but I hadn't. And I just hit the edge of tire and holding it. And, that, and I was down. I brought Raman down as well. Yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah, small crash. Just got back to the front and switch on. But super annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Um... How was that crosswind day? Because on TV, it looked absolutely filthy and you guys averaged 51k an hour and it looked like the most stressful day possible on a bike. How was it for you boys? Obviously, there was pressure to win the stage, but no GC guy. But I still imagine any any sort of stage like that, everyone wants to be in the front and it's just impossible for everyone to be in the front and it was carnage. Yeah, I mean, I think for the GC guys, they're just absolutely all in to lose no time. And then for the sprint, for our team, it's about making the finish in a hectic day as fresh as possible to still do the lead out. Um, we started near the front. We were ready for it. I mean, I, I, I think when it opened up the first echelon, I was in 
we were across the road and I was sitting in the second or third line. So you, you, you're so near the front, just one or two metres back and somehow managed to miss, <laughs> miss that split. I started sprinting and thought, no, I'll go back. To just took the second echelon. Uh, we had in, in us there, so kind of thinking it's going to come back. Rolled through because at the end of the day, if I, if I had a GC, you, right, it's in your wheel. You've got to absolutely all in because you cannot risk losing time. But for us, it's about getting through and then having the fresh legs at the end for the sprint. So, um, yeah, it's a stressful day for us, but um, it's a really strong team for the for the crosswinds with Arno and the lead out. Um, so if I'm following these guys, um, if I'm in the wheel of these guys, I know there's not too much panic, but, yeah, of course, um, yeah, for some GC teams, I can only imagine stress on these days. Yeah. What's the feeling like in the group? Rest day, you've won three stages. Like, you guys must be feeling pretty confident and pretty good about your your work so far. Yeah, I mean, we were the whole time have been pretty com- complacent. Like, we we never we never go. We're definitely going to win today. You know, absolutely not. Um, okay, it's been a perfect start, and Anna's showed he's really dominant, but. I mean, there's still quick guys here like Gavria. I mean, with his UAE train, give him the right, give him the right, uh, the right opening, and he's a very hard guy to beat. So, of course, we would love one more stage when we had the points jersey two. Now, um, we're not done yet, but it's pressure off the shoulders, put it that way, coming into this rest day. But we know we're not finished. Everyone's pretty relaxed. So, um, yeah, I mean. Just, just normal, but it feels like less pressure than when we arrived in the Giro, that's for sure, because we've yeah. kind of achieved what we came to do already, but still not done yet. We are talking before we started recording that it's mostly English. You guys are talking. Demar's kind of <laughs> the odd one out a little bit, doesn't speak super English, but you said it's getting better. Like, is it Yeah. Is it good energy I mean, at the, the table? Yeah, I mean, it's French team, like meetings, radio, everything all in French with the staff. You know, the language of the team is in French, but for the for the boys chat at the table, it's in English more, probably would be more in French if it wasn't for me, actually. And then, so we end up speaking a lot in English. You know, you can see sometimes if, if it's going too far, I know it's not enjoying, but I mean... I think English is a preferred language for the group. The other guys speaking better French than me, but have a really good conversation. It's always in English between us. When we've got Lithuanian, Italian, Dutch guy is part of an, an Australian for the for the rise of Arno. Um, yeah, he hasn't picked pick the best train if he wants to speak <laughs> French at the table. But uh, yeah, how's your French going? Yeah, I mean, I understand it improved during the quarantine. We take some extra lessons there. I understand, can speak what I want, but for, yeah, for a conversation, the table can be super hard. So, uh, off season, you know, for me, I always have to keep trying to learn a little bit as much as you don't want to. Yeah, I wouldn't say it around the team, but, uh, <laughs> you know, and off, just, just for, yeah, if we want to stay with his team, want to stay with Arno, it's, for the better to keep learning the language because, um, yeah, French team is how it is. So the rest of the Giro, I probably see two stages that you're probably going to be going for, 11 and 19, maybe 10 and 13, I don't know. But are you guys targeting a few specific ones? Yes. That's given too much There's away. A few stages coming up this week, but those – those stages where it's like maybe we can pass, they're perfect for the breakaway, and it's a lot of pulling for the team, mm. a lot of energy if we don't get it. And we were ripped the other day by Sagan, I think, on stage eight, the one Dowsett one. For you know, he said to something like to the media, uh, something about not having any balls to to pull again that day. But the thing is. It was also, if we go for, you know, we kind of looked at it as 
to try and win stage four again out of eight kind of comes across a bit arrogant almost in a way i think it does to pull again and not let the break go 200k stage not sure to pass to to be like right we're gonna go win this stage is a bit arrogant we kind of put our feet on the ground and said maybe we can't win this one today and let the break go um we still got stages next week so i think it'll be the same on the stages that are maybe going to be a little bit difficult i doubt we'll pull for another sprint um and we'll really just go in for the stage of a, of a sure sprint a fourth a fourth victory would be would be uh amazing um yeah, yeah. i mean the way it looks now people are probably saying arno can win every every possible sprint but i don't think we see it like that and i think in the next lead out i, I expect a pretty big challenge from uae they did in a lot in stage seven and i think if they get it together the gavria they can be a big challenge yeah that's for sure just going back to Sagan ripping you, ripping you boys. It's not really your responsibility. You've won three stages. You guys don't need to win another one. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it was was a strange was a strange comment. I mean, it's true. I remember we pulled a lot in the Giro last year when I only had one stage win. Um, so with three stage wins, two hundred k difficult stage. Yeah, to to hear that. No balls, yeah, it's true. We had we'd, done, we'd, we'd achieved enough, and actually, Arno wanted it. We, we wanted a day off mentally as well. Yeah, Arno also did. He just wanted a day off, uh, mentally, pretty a lot of stress early, and just um, get to this rest day in good shape. How are you feeling personally about the rest of the Giro? Are you going to get a chance to do your own thing on stage 14 in the TT? And how are you feeling about getting through the big, big mountain days? And obviously. Uh, the rest of the boys in the lead out are going to be doing everything they can to get through in, in the time cut on some of these big days. Yeah. Um, I wasn't really thinking about stage 14, but the way I felt the last days, we, okay, we finished in the group head at state with Arno, but it was never really under any pressure in the mountain days. Or well, it's easy to say when you finish half an hour behind, but, um, yeah, I think stage, the way I'm feeling, I could try on the stage 14. So long, when you haven't done any TT work in a while, it's maybe a bit long for me. But yeah, why not? I think in a grand tour, you never know. Like, it's if other guys are tired, um, we get to take it pretty easy on these mountain days and pass. So, yeah, that could be a, a chance for me to give it a crack if I want. Outside of that, I don't really see too much. And mountain days is about saving energy for the, for the flatter stages with Arno um it's i mean as i say it's the, the goal now for me is 100 percent in in for demar and um but the, the perfect one might be that last stage milan the 16 kilometer time trial yeah. this be if i want can if i'm feeling okay not too tired maybe i'll give it a nudge and then i think the rest of the stage is just going to be about saving energy and going all in for those um sprint days but uh, it's been been nice to not be. I mean, I remember last year in the year I was really suffering some of the days in the mountains, and yeah, we still have twelve stages to go that can come. But uh, we've passed pretty well, especially Arno. He's really looked uh, not under stress at all. And yesterday we were still there, and then I mean, sixty k to go. We we dropped off when when the pace wasn't high because we just knew we're going to make the time cut. What's the point of staying here any longer? We just and we and we cruised the last sixty kilometers, so uh, yeah, the group's in good shape. And I think there shouldn't be too much stress. I think I'm more worried about the, the really bad weather. I think that is yeah, it's going to be nasty. Yeah, in the mountains if if it goes ahead. Yeah, is there is there a bit of a feel that it's going to come unstuck with the weather or the coronavirus, or there's no real inkling at the moment? Yeah. I, I've seen some stuff now coming out about how, yeah, that there is a bit in doubt whether the race makes it to Milan, but yeah, they've said that for a lot of our races this year and anything for the media to put out there. Um, but it is true with, with Yates out with two positive tests the other day. Now every, we've all done another test today. We, it would be a nervous wait for those results, actually. Remember, riders and staff, plus with it escalating a little bit in Italy. And then also for the route, I mean, it looks like 
some of these stages in the last week, I believe it's, yeah, I don't really think it's going to be possible. Maybe they have a B plan for stages. Flat ones would be welcome for us, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. Or, or and Quick Step will be happy with that too. Yeah, with exactly, and with um, but with the the COVID and the stages, who's who knows? You know, everything. It's twenty twenty. Nothing certain. <laughs> when do you get the test back from today? When will that'll come out? Tonight? I think, I'm not actually sure. I have no idea. They, I did, I did it so early this morning that I didn't ask questions. Uh, it, we had a we had a doping control at seven thirty, and then went straight to nasal test, and I was straight back to the bed. So uh, it was it wasn't the morning I was hoping. No for. rest day on the rest yeah. day, really. Yeah, exactly. Just one more quick question before I let you go. There's so many Australian boys in the race. Have you got a chance to to catch up with a few of the guys on? some of the easier times of the race and how is Lucas and Jai going? Cause they're looking really good from a distance. Yeah. I mean, yeah, being able to catch up. I mean, the sprint days were super focused staying together and then the mountain days, most of them are ahead of me. So, um, yeah, but catching up for a quick chat, um, kind of avoiding the mid shooting guys now. After the <laughs> is, there, is there a feel that is everyone trying to stay away from them in the bunch? Well, when the morning when we saw about Yates, I know said to me straight away, Miles, I don't want you to talk. It was a joke, but there was some truth to it. Miles, I don't want you talking to the Michigan guys in the bunch anymore. <laughs> okay. But uh, I still was still speaking to the guys, just kind of kept kept the distance. So um, but that, that day, actually, they, you could see they were completely down after that crosswind stage. Super, they lost two guys with injury they already lost Brent Bookwalder then Yates out I mean it's a long tour when you go in all in for Yates and then next minute your GC guy's gone it would be like it would be like Arno out after stage one in the Giro for us it would be like what do we do now it's Mm. a long tour then so I can feel it for those guys but yeah I think uh, hopefully Lucas can kind of shine a bit now he's super strong yesterday so yeah but no yeah, it's really nice to see um, some of the Aussie guys like Joe and Lucas having a good tour, that's for sure. Cool. Thanks, Miles, for your time on your on your rest day. Yeah. Really appreciate yeah. it. And um, all the best for the rest of the Giro and especially in the lead-outs with Arnaud. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Good all the best. See ya. Bye. Bye.